Good morning and welcome to Acme Canines Coffee Chat, the place where you gain tips and advice on caring for your dog. Happy October 7th. I'm Laura Pecos and your host for Coffee Chat. Did you know October is National Pet Wellness Month? Acme Canine wants to keep your dog healthy not only during October but all year long. We want our canine companions to live long, healthy lives. So here are some things to think about. As humans, we're able to take care of ourselves and communicate to doctors when we're not feeling well. Unfortunately, our dogs can't tell us when they're not feeling well, so they have to rely on us to ensure that they stay healthy. Because of this, the American Veterinary Medical Association has deemed October as National Pet Wellness Month. Throughout the month of October, learn what you can do to promote your pet safety. Dogs age much more quickly than we do, which means changes in their health can occur and escalate very quickly. The best way to keep your dogs free from illness is to make routine wellness appointments. And these visits will, will really be helping you and your vet. Keeping your dog's health and wellness on the right track. It'll also help diagnose and treat for any illnesses. It'll help your vet administer species-specific vaccines for disease prevention and protection. And it will address potential threatening health issues before they become a big problem. Another one is to keep an eye on your dog's weight. It's estimated that more than half of the dogs and cats in America are overweight or obese. Wow, that's amazing. These animals run the risk of developing high blood pressure, diabetes, digestive issues, liver problems, heat intolerance, oh, and a, and a slew of other health complications. Keep your pets in a healthy range by, here we go, one, feeding them a diet with wholesome ingredients and balanced nutrition tailored to their age group. We, we at Acme Canine uh, treat Penny and Autumn with a raw diet and we supplement with um, what we call these called Volhards. Great company and uh, the dogs are really thriving on it. So highly recommend Volhard. A little complicated to do, but a great product. Also, give your dogs treats sparingly. They're so full of excess calories and, and fat. We, don't just give them to your dog for any reason. You know, we find praise is very, very good for dogs and you can actually develop a praise level where a pat means one thing, a rub means another, and just loving on them totally means they are just a super dog. And, and think about those kind of things rather than always giving that food to them. Oh, here's a big one, not feeding them table scraps. I don't know how often you have lots, lots of relatives, they think, oh, food, the dog's begging for food or the dog's next to the table, they must want something to eat. So be sure to, especially during the holiday season, remind your family and, and relative, relatives and friends even, um, the dogs don't need table scraps. It's, it's worse for them and you can say, if you want to give them something, here's a bowl, you can put them in and then toss a bowl in the garbage. But you know, so uh, just that might be something to do, especially as the holidays are coming up. Oh, and the last one is set aside some time for them to get adequate exercise. Um, you know, exercise is, there's all kinds of exercises. You know, you can play fetch in the house, you can play fetch outside, you can have them look, hide things and have them look for it. Um, another form of exercise, is, you know, is obedience, where you uh, teach them things, good, good mental exercise. Um, and walking. Walking is amazing. It, it develops a relationship between you and your dog. Plus, you can really observe them. I mean, they're walking ahead of you or they're walking by your side. You can see if they're ahead of you. You can kind of watch their hips moving. You can see if their, their uh, feet are sliding on the ground. I mean, all kinds of stuff you can pick up just by watching your dog walk. Uh, so, you know, something to think about. But walking, too, is a way to communicate and you're communicating with your dog, you're developing, a, a, the dog is respecting you because you're expecting it not to be pulling on leash. So many cool things. So uh, walking is really, really important, not just for obesity, but for all sorts of things with, with the, that relationship with your dog. I have to admit the next one I'm a little bit uh, lax on, but it, it is very important. In fact, 
dental hygiene is just as important for pet as it is for humans. I mean, without regular dental care, your pet's at risk of developing periodontal disease. You know, the cavities and all these and bad gums, the whole thing. So, you know, you really want to be careful because you don't want your dog to get heart problems, um, you know, the pain in their teeth, having them removed. So proper dental care can add years to your dog's life. And take, take the time just to kind of go in there and just put little finger cuts on, dog toothpaste, not human toothpaste, and then just rub in there. You can do it from behind and it's and the dog gets used to it. Plus they like being massaged a little bit. So as they get more comfortable, they'll be opening up their mouth for you to do it for them. So yeah, dental health is very important and it's something that we probably don't do as often as we should. Uh, there are lots of toys out there where you know, they have like the little bristles on, rubbery bristles where it kind of massages their gums. But by you doing it, you're going to be able to see their gums, see how healthy they are. You're going to see cracked teeth. You're going to see all kinds of stuff. So, uh, like I said, I'm not the best about doing this, but I really, really think that we'll make a pact. Do it at brush your dog's teeth at least once a week. Okay? Good. It used to be that you would do like a uh, once a year checkup. Now it's re they're asking, the veterinarians are saying, two checkups a year is probably the way to go because... In a year, so much can happen. This way, they're finding stuff maybe you're not aware of. Um, we do a lot of, uh, they, we call it uh, head to toes, where you do this exam. Um, it's on our website if you wanted to check that out. But if you don't do it, yeah, definitely see the vet twice, twice a year, and I think you're going to be very happy, and your dog will be much healthier too. The last is happiness. Happiness is such an uh, important component in your dog's overall wellness. So don't underestimate the benefit of spending time with your best friend. You know, they're, they're, uh, they like companionship. And without that or mental stimulation, they can get be depressed, lethargic, act out in destructive ways, chew, chew walls, chew through doors. They do all kinds of crazy stuff because, you know, they're bored. So um, Remember, your pet is your family. Interact with them, talk to them, walk with them, play with them, pet them, give them attention. Um, you know, they deserve it. And your dog will benefit and reward you with unconditional love. Today, I also wanted to talk a little bit about virtual dog training. Well, because of COVID-19 pandemic, uh, dog trainers kind of had to cancel meeting with people uh, in person, you know, mostly for safety reasons. And at the same time, People were acquiring dogs and, you know, just depleting shelters of dogs and they needed help with training. So as a dog trainer, we had to come up with a safe way to help people interact with their pets and help us to train the person to uh, have a better mannered dog. And thank goodness for Zoom and these wonderful um, connections online now. And, and people are much more comfortable with it too. But when I first started out, you know, it was it was difficult for both of us when we were communicating, but now you know, everyone likes Zoom. They know how to use it. To say it has really changed the options in in uh, dog training, and I think for the better. You know, at first glance, dog training may seem like an odd service for a virtual platform, but this past year we really learned that using virtual check-ins in between maybe in personal sessions, um, video submissions you know, people videoing their dog or having someone video them working their dog. These, and, and then also us sharing documents online. I mean, it has proven so successful. I, I, I can't, you know, I never imagined, because I was always saying hands-on, hands-on. But really, trainers and students can discuss the students' techniques while watching the videos. Um, we, can, we can coach you through emails and messages. And, and provide you with information that you can read up on. And it's kind of caused us to make some videos too because there are certain things that needed to be explained in much more detail. And so, um, you know, we had to kind of step up there to the game too. But what I really like about these is that your training sessions, you know, when you do an in-person in, um, in training session, it's usually an hour long. Now, we, we pack a lot of information in and usually the dog and the human are just overwhelmed. A lot to remember, you know, because, you know, we do repetition, but that, but these 
Zoom things, you can do very short training sessions, concentrating only on what needs to be done. And it, it works out so much better. You are focused on the new concept. You're not overwhelming your dog. You're not overwhelming you. Just a really great way to, to uh, actually learn, I think. If you're videoing this, you can rerun it and watch it again and, and see like, you know, as a trainer, we're coaching you. So we point out things and ways to make you better timing, or maybe you're saying commands way too many times or, or whatever. Now you can actually, you know, you're f so focused on learning, you, you, you're, it's oblivious. You don't know what you're doing because you're just kind of like really focused on, on getting this new technique down. So here you have a tool to look back on. I think this is just absolutely wonderful and we can refer back to it. We can say, you know, okay, remember here. So if I, I bring up a concept and you, you've saved your videos, you can always, you know, go refer back to them. Um, I just think it's such a benefit now and who would think virtual, right? I mean, this is, this is like hands-on dog training group classes or, you know, all this kind of stuff. So definitely something um, to consider. The other cool thing is training can be done anywhere. So you could, you know, you could, we could start out in your home, low distraction, um, just you and your dog learning the, the foundation skills. And then I can say, okay, I want you to go to a dog park and I could see how your dog interacts there. And in that process, we could talk about, oh, here, do this, this, and this. And you can see the change in your dog's reaction. We can, you know, we can, you can take me anywhere because it's virtual. So it improves your dog's learning by controlling the distractions and the location. It's just an excellent way to, um, to help your dog and, and set it up for success. It's a myth that dogs benefit from learning new behaviors in a, in a group setting. There, you know, there's so many distractions. Uh, your dog is learning, you're learning. Uh, there's other dogs misbehaving, just like your dog might be misbehaving. It's not the right environment, you know. So having a virtual training session, it's going to get, you know, you're going to advance quicker. You won't have to, um, I mean, you'll still have to practice, but you, you, you maybe you won't have to have as many training sessions because you're learning everything as you go. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, dogs do need to have so social interactions, but if you get the foundation skills down first, you can add uh, distractions. I, I call it, I have like a scale on it, one to 10. You know, one might be you just bending over and the dog breaks the command. Whereas 10 might be uh, the, there's dogs barking and your dog breaks the command. So you build up to that 10 rather than try to get your dog to understand it at 10. Less frustration for you, less frustration for the dog, and everything happens much quicker because you're in a very healthy environment with a, in this virtual world because you're controlling the distraction. Also, it makes sense to have the dog, if, once they have the necessary skills, to learn to control themselves by putting them in particular situations that might cause anxiety or aggression. I can watch you interact and help you in that situation. You can watch over and over. You can see the signs of your dog becoming a little more anxious. You can see the signs of your dog becoming more aggressive. Um, that's invaluable. I mean, those are things that you, you don't catch because you're so focused on, oh my gosh, my dog's going to bite someone or oh my gosh, my dog's, you know, getting upset and is going to pee. No, now you have, you can watch it. You can see your dog start changing behavior. You can control it with commands. Win-win, perfect. Also, we talked a little bit, but reviewing your training sessions can be such an educator. Uh, when you see your behavior over and over, you can really pick up on timing issues, on um, gestures you're doing, you know, maybe ahead of time. There's all sorts of, you know, just amazing things that a, a video shows that you're not aware of when you're actually in a one-on-one -on -one session. There are really so many things you can see in a virtual training session that you can't see in a one-on-one -on -one session where you're live and you're, you know, you have this one hour that you have to learn this. It just kind of takes some of the pressure off. You're more relaxed. Your dog's more relaxed. Um, again, win-win. Also, working 
with your dog in a relaxed environment can reduce the triggers which can bring on aggression. So here again, you're able to accomplish much more with your dog quicker than you would in a situation where your dog is already amped up to this level and going to set off where we, you know, and yet they don't have the skills to control themselves. So another good reason for that. Okay, so I'm gonna get a little geeky. Um, behavior science has proven that in the environment facilitates the behavior. What this means is when a dog is trained away from home by someone other than their owner, teaching the owner how to maintain the behavior is essential because the dog learns in the environment it's in. And so if someone else is training that dog, at some point the, o the owner needs to. When you're using virtual training, the, you're training the dog with the trainer there helping you through it. And the transfer process takes place throughout the training. Um, it allows you to learn faster and it is an amazing plus for the training process. I can't save enough about virtual training. Um, it's a great option. It offers benefits to everyone, the dog owner, the dog, and to the trainer as well, because I can look back on things and see maybe I missed something or I had my head turned during the in-person. Now I can see things and go over and over and evaluate what's going on and, and I can be a better coach to you. I hope I helped you understand that virtual training is not something uh, that was just set up for the pandemic, that it truly is a great way to learn. Maybe you don't need it for all your sessions, but you know, you can have a consultation, you can do all sorts of things with it. And, um, and that's why Acme Canine has gone to virtual training. So if you're interested in virtual training, Acme Canine offers it. And you can sign up on our website at checkout www.acmecanine.com. Well, I hope you enjoyed our uh, little session today. In two weeks, we're going to have a special Halloween edition. I don't know if you knew this, but I love Halloween. So until then, I wish both you and your dog a very happy Thursday, and I'll see you in two weeks. All the best.